So this will just be a quick video about distribution voltages, the voltages present in the wiring and home, and how one gets transformed into the other. And the reason why I'm doing this video is because I've been kind of surprised by how many people I've spoken to that work in various electrical fields, pun intended, uh, don't know this kind of stuff and just aren't aware of what goes on behind the wall. Um, and you know, you might not need to know this stuff to uh, be able to do your job, but I find that when you've got at least a basic understanding of you know what's actually going on, you can work smarter and safer. So to start off with, you got the distribution lines running through your neighborhood, and for single phase, you'll have two lines with a phase difference, a phase voltage between them of 2,000 volts to 35,000 volts. And that just depends on the distribution technology where you live. That then goes into the primary side of a transformer. It's a terrible looking coil, but... Um, and these will be the cylindrical looking things on the tops of the power poles or you might have a uh, boxy looking one that's mounted to a concrete slab on the ground. This transformer has a secondary which actually feeds your house and that looks something like this. You've got a center tap and then the two other legs and the lines that come into your house actually, you'll have one will be red, one of them's black, and one of them's white. And this one, the red one is 110 or 120. You've got one up here, 110. And you look at that and you say, well, what's what's going on there? Why is why are there two hundred and tens on the opposite side of each other? And well that's because our convention for now is that we've chosen this center tap to be zero volts. And now right now the way that I've got this drawn, there's no special significance for this to be called zero volts. There the this transformer isolates these three voltages from the rest of the world. And so as far as any reference to earth or ground is concerned, all three of these voltages are floating. So you know, none of them can actually be defined with respect to ground yet. There's no reason right now why we couldn't just as well call this zero volts, call this 110 and then say that this one up here is 220 volts. So the important takeaway there is that there's not a separate 110 volt line and a 220 volt line coming to the house or going through the house. There's just these two outer legs of the secondary of your distribution transformer and there's a 220 volt RMS difference between these two legs and then there's the third leg, a center tap, that's half the voltage between these two. That has a connection to ground at various places so we call this zero volts and we call these outer two 110. The outer two together though 220 volts between them. So now we get into the second reason why I made this video right now. And what you see in front of you is a step up, step down transformer. It was an item that I sold in my eBay store and the guy who bought it, he couldn't figure out how to get it working for him. His plan was to run a big long drop cord with 220 volts out to the transformer and step it down to mitigate the line losses for he had some outdoor uh, gardening equipment, electrical gardening equipment or something. Um, but so I started this whole long process of the returns and 
the item getting lost in the mail and it was just a huge pain in the ass. But his reason for all this, the explanation on the eBay uh, claim was that the, the transformer was not made for use in the US. It's a Chinese transformer designed for Chinese wiring, uh, Chinese 220 volts, not US 220. And, you know, that's just ridiculous because 220 volts is 220 volts whether you're in New York or Shenzhen or Neptune. So, what's going on here and why was this a source of confusion? So the input, the input of this transformer is just like the output of our distribution transformer outside the house. It's got three legs, two outer and a center tap. Only in this case, the center tap isn't zero volts. The center tap is 110. The bottom leg right here, that's what's being called neutral or zero volts. Our center tap right here is one of the line inputs, the 110. Because you see, remember, if we call this down here zero volts, then the center is 110 and the outside is 220. Okay? Bottom leg here, zero volts, center, 110, top, 220. And the confusion was thinking that neutral always means neutral, always means zero volts, which in this case, it doesn't. So the way you wire up a transformer like this, if you've got a 220 volt input and you want to step down to 110, you want to take that 220 to the outer legs of the transformer. You don't want to put 220 across the center tap in one of the outer legs because then you're only using half of the transformer and you're not going to get the 110 output that you expect. So what I got here is I've got my two 110 lines, red and black, which add up to 220. and you know, which is which, I don't know, it doesn't matter though, it's AC. So, up here, we're coming off of the breaker box, off of a uh, utility breaker. We've got our red and our black 110 lines. They come down here, they go into the transformer. Uh, focus. Alright. And so I'm gonna flip, well first off, here, uh, take my uh, multimeter here and connect it here, okay, and you see that, 250 volts, alright, so I'm going to flip the transformer on, Let's see here once again, 250 volts, and then down here, and turn this guy on. Nope, turn the hold off. 123 volts. Okay. Output 110. Follow that guy down. And boom, 123. The other output here says 220 volts. Let's just check that. Okay. And boom, back up to 250. So I should just point out real quick that if you are actually going to wire up this transformer or one like it for use, then there is a third connection that you need to make in addition to the um, you know, 110 and neutral or the uh, red 110 and black 110 and that's the ground connection which goes to the chassis over here and the ground connection is just there for in case there's a electrical or mechanical failure inside of the transformer that causes one of the hot lines to short out to the chassis then you want that to short out through the ground and trip the circuit breaker instead of you know, shorting out through your heart and killing you. One of the pit 
one of the pitfalls, especially just starting out with electronics, is that voltage isn't an absolute value. It's not a material property. It's a derived unit and it's a relative value. In other words, an object doesn't have a voltage any more than an object has a time. It's no more correct to say that something is 220 volts than it is to say it's 220 seconds. Well, 220 seconds from what? Same thing with voltage. 220 volts from what? From ground, earth, from chassis ground, from some other arbitrary voltage that's set by some regulator in a device that you've built. So that can be a source of confusion because you you might run into different conventions or different labeling schemes. For example, we saw with the distribution transformer that power comes into your house, you've got a 110 uh, neutral, zero, and another 110. But until you've actually got a device connected up that has an earth reference, a ground connection, then there's no reason why you couldn't just as easily call this zero volts, 110 volts, and 220 volts. And so then you look at something like this transformer, where now neutral is your, you know, bottom leg of your transformer, your zero volts, and your line voltages are up here, 110 and 220. So like I said before, you know, maybe you don't need this stuff to do your job or to make the thing work, but I think that once you've got at least this basic level understanding of, you know, how the 110 and 220 arrive at your house, uh, what's going on behind the circuit breaker, then you know, it lends itself to a better understanding of you know, any other projects you might be working on with transformers, wiring up a step-down transformer like this, um, you know, anything else that you might be doing with mains. Now I'm an electronics engineer, not an electrical engineer, so everything that I deal with in my day-to-day -day is small voltage, small signal, a lot of the times self-contained and battery-powered. So I am rarely, actually, I am never concerned with anything further upstream than what's coming out of my 120 volt wall outlet. That's just not my field, not my monkeys, not my circus. Uh, so, I might have missed something, I might have gotten some things wrong. If I've made any glaring errors or, you know, omissions that you feel are important to add, please feel free to let me know with a conceited comment below. Thanks for watching. Bye.